Hi, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life. Today I am talking about skin health uh, from the inside out. So I know one of the hardest things to deal with as you get older is changes to your skin. Estrogen is our youth hormone. So as we go through menopause, declining levels of estrogen mean coming more wrinkles, less elasticity and more pigmentation or age spots. Um, these changes plus accumulation of years of sun exposure, pollution, toxins, stress and other factors can all show up on um, in how our skin looks and uh, feels. Conditions also like um, rosacea, uh, where the skin is red and bumpy, uh, may become more noticeable. And then hormone fluctuations can lead to adult acne um, and conditions like eczema, eczema and psoriasis can emerge or worsen. Now, a lot of these issues can be managed by topical creams or aesthetic treatments, but your skin is a mirror to your inner health. Uh, so your diet, lifestyle and supplements and environment can have a big impact. So let's dive into some of these things. Natural ways to improve your skin health. First one is your diet. Now, what we eat and drink is uh, critical to how our skin functions. Your skin's an organ and uh, it, it covers the body and it mirrors, like I said, your in, inner health. So Making sure, first of all, that we're fully hydrated is absolutely crucial. Drinking enough water keeps your skin plump and minimizes the appearances of fine lines and wrinkles. So we want to be aiming for at least two liters, roughly, depending on what you're doing, of filtered water, if you can. Don't want any rubbish in there. Um, and that, But that can include things like hydrating foods, like soups or fruits and vegetables, salads, smoothies, that kind of stuff. You don't have to drink two liters of actual water but um, more if you're exercising or sweating as well. Uh, the next thing we wanna be doing is focusing on antioxidant rich food. So antioxidants are your skin's best defense against free radical damage. So we want to be eating lots of berries, colorful vegetables, those leafy greens, things like olive oil, nuts and seeds, um, along with foods like carrots, oranges and almonds that are rich in vitamin A, C and E, all good antioxidant uh, vitamins. We want to next be looking at our healthy fats. So omega-3 fatty acids, we know they're found in oily fish like salmon and mackerel and sardines. Um, they help maintain skin elasticity and reduce inflammation. So really, really important for your skin, but also your heart and your eyes and everything else pretty much. Um, they also support the lipid barrier of the skin. So that helps keep it hydrated and supple. So if you're not a big fan of fish or you don't eat enough oily fish, then consider a high quality fish oil or algae supplement if you're vegan. Number four is collagen. Now, obviously, uh, estrogen has a big impact on how much collagen we produce. So when we don't produce enough estrogen, our collagen goes down and for other reasons, too. But uh, we can focus on collagen rich foods, which are high in protein. Um, and we can also look at supplements. So food wise, we wanna be eating lots of good quality protein. Protein helps in every other way too, as well as boosting collagen. So we want to be making sure we're eating meat, fish, dairy, beans, legumes, uh, all that kind of good stuff. And then things like bone broth can be really helpful, uh, rich in collagen, um, that'll help with, uh, with upping your levels too. Next is your skin loving micronutrients. So. We want lots of minerals like zinc and selenium. I'm going to pick these two out because they're really, really important in um, skin protection. So foods rich in zinc include things like um, seafood, oysters, pumpkin seeds, uh, meat, whole grains, uh, beans, nuts, dairy, chickpeas, things like that. Selenium rich foods. The best one for me is Brazil nuts because everyone can eat those pretty much unless you're allergic. Um They've got enough, uh, three Brazil nuts or four Brazil nuts will be enough selenium for your daily intake. So you can also find it in things like meat, eggs, dairy, beans and lentils. Lastly, on the diet front, we want to be limiting those aging foods. Now, some foods can accelerate inflammation and aging. So they, these are the ones that we know about, but we want to kind of minimize um, when we're thinking about skin health. So sugar, refined carbohydrates, vegetable oils, fried foods, ultra processed stuff and alcohol. We know that already, don't we? <laughs> Next up is lifestyle. There's lots we can do uh, in our daily routines to help out and support our skin. First one is exercise. Now, exercise improves blood circulation. It delivers that oxygen and all the nutrients to your skin, not only helping nourishing them, but also helping that detoxification process. So making sure you're moving regularly and incorporating those three S's that I talk about in your routine. Sweat, stretch, and I can't even say it. Sweat, 
strengthen and stretch. So if you're doing a little bit of those three things uh, in your week, then that is going to help. Number two is sleep. We know sleep is so good for us in all the different ways, but we didn't maybe necessarily know it's so good for your skin, but it's when your skin goes into repair mode, it regenerates the cells and it repairs the damage from the day. So duration and consistency of sleep patterns is really important, uh, getting enough, but also being consistent about your sleep. And then, you know, usual stuff, adopting a relaxing bedtime routine, making sure you're minimizing caffeine and alcohol and balancing that blood sugar too. Number three of the lifestyle is sun protection. Now you do need exposure to the sun to get your vitamin D, but you also need to protect yourself against too much, especially on your face. Um, so uh, I always use a moisturizer or with a sunscreen in it or a sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30 uh, to shield um, skin from UVA and UVB rays and reapply it often if you're exercising, if you're out for a long time or you're sweating. Um, watch out for those chemical laden sun creams. They're not gonna do anything for your skin. Um, and they've also got some nasty chemicals in there that's not gonna help your health generally. So go for brands like Tropic or Green People for natural sun care. They're the ones I found are the best uh, for that kind of stuff. Number four is stress management. Now, stress <laughs> does all sorts of horrible stuff to us, doesn't it, to our health? But it can wreak havoc on your skin. It can lead to things like, it, it basically stress in, increases inflammation. So it can lead to things like acne, um, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, things like that. So we want to be uh, thinking about stress reduction uh, or management such. We can't always reduce our stress, but we can certainly try and manage it better through all the usual things that I talk about, you know, meditation, walking in nature, sitting still for a bit, for periods of time or reading or listening to whatever. Whatever it is that makes you happy and switches off that stress response is your routine, whatever that is. Number six, number five, sorry, is artificial light exposure. So we're constantly looking at screens on our phones and that blue light from computers and phones uh, can increase things like oxidative stress that, that, that causes free radicals that damage our skin cells, um, reduce collagen and elastin and contribute to premature aging. It can also trigger inflammation um, and that weakens the skin's barrier, making um, things like uh, acne and eczema are really difficult as well. So what we want to do with light exposure is take regular breaks from your screens. That's going to help your mental health anyway. Um, get some natural daylight as much as possible uh, during the day, uh, you know, especially in the winter when we're in the dark a lot. But, you know, just sticking your even if you can't get outside, stick your head out of a window and just get that daylight onto your face. It helps with serotonin and melatonin, too, which is your whole sleep wake cycle. Uh, we want to be switching off our gadgets at night, um, choosing blue light filters if you're on screens a lot. So you can get the blue light glasses or you can get filters for your phone and your computer. Um, always a good idea if you're if you're doing that a lot. You can also use a red light mask. Now, I've done this myself. I, I love my uh, light mask because we know that red light therapy actually um, emits these uh, low level wavelengths that penetrate below, below the skin surface and it stimulates collagen production and it reduces fine lines and it reduces inflammation. So, um, you know, yes, they're expensive for a good one. You don't want a cheap one because they don't really work, but a good one, yeah, can cost a few hundred. Um, so if you can invest in something like that, that just can make a bit of difference. Um, if not, you can go and get infrared saunas as well. They can help with the whole body um, if you've got a local sauna near you. Uh, number six is uh, minimizing toxins generally. Now we talk, I talk a lot about environmental chemicals, but you know, some of these toxins can really compromise that skin's integrity, promoting inflammation, breaking down proteins and disrupting the normal skin function. So if we can, we wanna be trying to eat organic where possible, where, especially where you've got the skins of things, so like fruits and salads, we want to be avoiding those pesticides, avoiding synthetic fragrances and things like um, scented candles and air fresheners. They're the worst, uh, but also some products, you know, personal products, laundry products that you use uh, that smell good are usually synthetic fragrances. So choosing natural brands over those can really help to minimize that environmental load. Supplements is the next section. So I know a lot of you are interested in what you can do supplement wise for your skin. First one is collagen. Yeah, we can eat protein, but generally our collagen levels really do dip. So we, we you know, it's really helpful to, to supplement. Um, so we want to be looking for a really good quality collagen brand for high levels and also better absorption. 
Uh, I like, there's a couple that I like. Hunter and Gather is probably my favorite um, collagen peptides because it comes in a powder and you can mix it in your drink. So I have it in my coffee in the morning. Um, Feel also do a vegan collagen, which is really good if you don't want to take um, marine or bovine derived collagen. Number two is vitamin D. It's really helpful, not just for aging and your immune system, uh, but your brain health as well, but it also helps to regulate cell growth, um, reducing that inflammation, strengthening the barrier, and um, generally keeping your skin really, skin really healthy. So vitamin D, uh, I would recommend it always to take all year round, unless you're really exposing your skin every day in the summer. But, you know, I don't know, here in the UK, we've had a very uh, average, mediocre summer, with certainly not enough sunshine to take us through the winter. So uh, vitamin D3 every day I take with K2, which helps it work properly. Um, and I take that all year round and I take a minimum of 2000 IU a day. That's way more than the government guidelines. Um, but they that is the level at which most scientific studies are saying you're getting the benefits. So the government's a little bit behind on that. Don't shoot me. Number three, supplement wise, you can take hyaluronic acid, really hard to say. <laughs> um, hyaluronic acid uh, helps to retain the moisture in the skin um, and keep it hydrated and plump. So you can use skincare with that ingredient or you can actually get it in supplements. Although I, I don't use that, so um, I'm not able to help you there. And the last supplements uh, I, I would do are, you know, my general top five anyway, um, which contain your antioxidants. So a good multivitamin with your B vitamins and all your usual vitamin A, retin as retinol and vitamin E and all of those are it's a good one to do. And you'll find that in my usual link. Um, extra vitamin C daily because that's your major potent antioxidant. Um, and it's uh, it's just hard to get kind of good levels you want at least a thousand milligrams a day um to protect you and um all the other the other three that i recommend are your omega-3 fats um your magnesium um and um yeah your vitamin c got that so uh that's your supplements now natural skin care is is obviously really important because you know diet and lifestyle can play a really critical role but you also want to be choosing the right skincare products. So you don't want to be looking to put more toxins into your system um, because your skin is your major detoxification system. So putting in toxins via your skincare is kind of just like making it all worse. So let's look for natural ingredients in your skincare to um, support the skin and avoid those chemicals like parabens, phthalates and synthetic stuff. So Natural brands like Tropic, um, by Sarah, I talked to last time, amazing facial oils and cleansers and toners as well. So uh, green people are really good. And there's lots and lots of natural brands out there that are fantastic. I can't, I haven't got room to list them all. So have a look at your skincare. Maybe, you know, don't change everything, but maybe next time something runs out, go, oh, I wonder if there's a natural alternative to this and I can change things bit by bit. The next thing I just want to talk about is changing your mind. Now, all of these things I've talked about can help us look after our skin health, but it won't necessarily change the way of we feel about ourselves when we look in the mirror. If we think we look old or ugly and we constantly wish we looked younger, this actually can have a huge impact on your physical and mental health. So what happens when we think those negative thoughts is that they trigger hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And then we know that that increases inflammation, accelerates aging, it switches on your aging genes um, rather than your protective genes. And this can all show up in our skin. Now, it's not easy when society is so focused on anti-aging and looking young, especially for women. But if we can reframe aging and just appreciate our amazing wisdom, our experience, resilience and strength, and we can start to look at ourselves with a little bit more pride, a bit more compassion, a bit more self-acceptance, um, taking the, some of the emphasis away from how we look and focusing on how we feel as we get older. This can be super, really liberating. And also just remember at the heart of it all that it's what a privilege it is to be getting older because a lot of people don't get that honour. Hey, so who's with me on that one? I hope you are. Um, but obviously we need to do as much as we can to keep uh, to keep us all happy. So don't forget, um, if you need any help with your hormones or your skin health, do contact us for more information on how we can support you. Um, hope that was helpful. See you next time.